This is part two of two. All right. If you haven't listened to the ATN segment on part one, you're going to want to check that out. But right now we're talking pre shot and post with thermal optics with Steve Lemonoff of ATN. All right, welcome back, Gun Talk Hunters. I'm your host, KJ, and as promised, we are back with Steve Lemonoff. This Gun Talk Hunt is brought to you by Six Hour. They do a little bit of everything, and I'm sure you've heard of them, um, but make sure you check them out. And also, ATN, you know, they are the future of optics. They are the cutting edge of technology when it comes to optics and getting you into thermal quicker um and i've been using thermal for years i've been using atn thermals for years and not in your traditional sense um i use it for scouting i use it for um you know location of prey after the shot but steve lemonov is here with us today steve how you doing fantastic kg thanks for having me again for the second segment of this uh you know hunt uh, episode and uh, i'd love to continue the conversation here and talk about the well i think i think the i, I think steve, steve has has kind of cut out on us for a little bit um he's frozen a little bit but but what he's what we're talking about is we're talking about our ability to um extend our hunts extend our season and get the most out of our optics um is really what we're looking at and I wanted to have a conversation and I will, I will be the first to say I got back from Kodiak and the one, the one thing I wish I would have been able to use in Kodiak was a monocular thermal because those black tail deer can hide on the side of a mountain in plain sight and you wouldn't see them. Uh, and I wish I had it for scouting. Um, Steve, I'm sure you hear this all the time, um, but but for a scouting tool, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about before the shot, you know, during the shot, and we're going to go after the shot, which I think even after the shot is more important for thermal uh, than even before and during. Um, so, Steve, talk a little bit about before the shot. Well, before the shot, um, you know, using thermal and detecting where your game is or your prey is it is valuable, so you know how to approach, how far you need to stalk. You know, even before the season, uh, learning patterns, mm -hmm. bedding areas, water holes, uh, you know, a trove of valuable information can be had by doing your homework and doing preseason uh, scouting and learning, uh, you know, the patterns of uh, the deer in your area where you're hunting, I think is very valuable because without doing your homework, you're never going to get on that big buck or, you know, the deer that you want, uh, because as we know, hunting is not easy. You have to put <laughs> a lot of work into it, a lot of effort, yeah, a lot and, of legwork and, and, and pre hunting, uh, you know, pre hunt scouting is very valuable, uh, to know exactly the areas where you should be concentrating your efforts on. Yeah. And, one thing is for certain is that, that scouting always a benefit. Um, one thing that I I know a lot of guys are well well I've got trail cameras that do the scouting for me. That's giving you a a, a blink of an eye um, is is really where and I've stopped running trail cam. Uh, I've got a couple that I'm testing out that I really like, um, but that gives me a fraction of the story. Um, and anytime you can spend time in the field is, is a lot better, but where I think thermal offers a, a leg up is those patterns. It is that extended look and you can record, um, which I think is even better because what happens in early season is okay. You find a gr bachelor group of bucks and they're all buddies and they're all hanging out together, but, at some point, and you've got them on trail cam. Awesome. It's probably a night picture. You're probably not getting day pictures of them because that's just the way they are. But what I found is all of a sudden there's a light switch that goes off. And now where are those deer? Well, 
they stop being friends. They started noticing the ladies or they are looking for a different food source to bulk up to chase the ladies. And then all of a sudden you don't know where those bucks are. You don't know what's happened. That happens every season to every guy I always talk to that's running a lot of trail cameras. They're like, man, I had a, a monster and maybe his area is a five mile radius. His home territory is probably going to be a little bit smaller than that. But what happens is, is he's like, you know what? It's time to pack up and move on and look, he'll be back at the end of the season if he makes it. But what thermal is doing for you, you don't, you don't just scout August, you know, August and early September, you're scouting all the way through scouting to me is not, you know, preseason only you've got to scout all the way through because different bucks are going to be moving in. Right. And yeah. So they, they establish their territory. They start fighting. They start, you know, uh, sharpening their, their antlers, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the process. Right. And they, as you mentioned, they, you know, they move away from home and uh, make their own kind of way and uh, look for those ladies. So, yeah. <laughs> and they spread out. And because my, the property I hunt on is a prime example of this. Like you can go through all summer and you will not see a single deer. You'll see maybe a couple does and you know, not a lot of, you won't see any big bucks, none, but there is a date, which is right around, you know, the fifth, the 10th of November. And it's like, I mean, it's a light switch. All of a sudden you're looking everywhere there. Where, where'd all these things show up at? And that's, that's what discourages a lot of guys. And I think like having a, a thermal unit that you can really, like you said, like locate those bedding areas. Cause maybe it's a hotter year. Maybe they're there. You can't see them. Your trail camera is not picking them up because they're just not moving. Um, man, thermal, nothing hides. Um, and you can pick them out. Yeah. Which light, is light foliage, uh, fog, light fog, you know, if they blend with the background, you could definitely, I, you know, pick them up and isolate them. As you mentioned yeah. on, on the rock face, those uh, black tail deer that you were uh, kind of looking at that with Kodiak. See, so, you know, there's a lot of benefits for thermal. That was so frustrating. Um, you know, and I don't, and I, I did, I should have done my due diligence. I should have looked at the regulations in Alaska, but I thought I had looked a while back and it said, you can't use thermal, you know, but that's a shame because, but then, but then again, is that for hunting or is that for like observation? Because well, there, there it would be for observation for because, right. because I would have taken, you know, something uh, like the OTS LT, right? Like I would have taken that, but it's a shame because think of how many, you know, bear, bear encounters yep. that we could save on. By, I mean, because if you could scan in an alder patch and go, holy crap, that's a big heat signature up there. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty safe to say that that's probably a bear laying in an alder patch. Right. Um, you know, that would, that would allow me to take a different route up that mountain or through that, you know, those tussocks or whatever it is. Or if it's a lower profile, it could be like a mountain lion could be something else, you know, right. lurking about. So, you know, right. a, a rich environment like Alaska, there's a lot of wildlife to be had there. And, yeah. you know, you have to be safe because these are some animals are can be very dangerous, like bears. Yeah. We So we were sitting there walking um, and we had walked, we had walked within a hundred yards of a big brown bear and had no clue. And so we're walking up. And, you know, tripping in, you know, bogs and walking through some swamp. And then all of a sudden I look back and we were like, oh, there's our, you know, our, our guys, um, that had just passed and, and they passed upwind. So where the bear was, they had walked around the other way that we had, thank goodness. Um, the bear had winded them, but that bear had taken off. Um, it, it had left them behind. It left them in the dust. Thank goodness it didn't go towards them. But, you know, but how beneficial would it have been? You know, I mean, had things turned out different and maybe they walked right towards the alder patch where that bear was, surprised it, and then they had an encounter uh, that they didn't, they wouldn't want, the bear doesn't want. You know, it just, it, something like that, like a thermal monocular, just a, just to cruise the area, just a glass would make so much sense. 
Absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, as we touched upon, you know, in part one, post shot is also important when, you know, you do take that deer or animal and there's a blood trail and it's getting past twilight and it's dark, definitely help you in game retrieval, which is very important yeah. to, you know, to save the meat, to, you know, make sure to recover the animal yeah. uh, in a safe manner and uh, not spend the entire night looking for it in the dark, uh, you know, in the flashlight. <laughs> I've been there multiple times, but, uh, Steve, let's pick that up on the other side of this break and, and talk about the game retrieval process and, and what that looks like. Um, even during the shot, um, let's talk about that too, but, uh, yeah, jump in here with a word from our sponsors and we'll be right back. ATN, they're running a hunting season special and they're taking up to $700 off some of their high end thermal optics. So if you thought about, Hey, Maybe I should prepare for coyote season um, and predator season. Now's the time to do it because ATN is offering a ton of specials on day night vision scopes, their binos, their monoculars, and their thermals. Of course, like their Thor 4, one of my favorites. It is a highly superior thermal optic uh, for your night hunting pleasure. But find out more at atncorp.com. And Franke, the Franke Momentum Elite Varmint is a looker. This gun is a uh, 223, 24-inch barrel, um, available in a few different options. Uh, we've got the Gore Optifade Subalpine, Midnight Bronze Cerakote, and a Midnight uh, Bronze Cerakote in addition, in a different size configuration. So the receiver and the barrel finish, all Cerakote. Nicely done. Um, if you're not familiar with Cerakote, which I'm sure you are, um, it just enhances the life of your gun. So it's got the evolved ergonomics like frame, like all the good stuff that makes it fit you really well. Um, but it's got raised curves and crisp checkering work together to deliver a firm grip and steady aim in any weather. Um, when you guys are hunting in those wet climates, um, you know, I was on a hunt a while back and I noticed like I was using a Woodstock gun and just did not have the grip and feel. Um, something like having something like the Evolved Ergonomics uh, coating and stuff really makes a difference, especially in those wet climates. It's MOGA guaranteed. Uh, so, you know, those small targets, aim small, miss small, especially on coyotes, bobcats, uh, predators like that, you're going to want a gun that flat out shoots. Uh, Relay uh, trigger, TSA pads. Um, seven year guaranteed warranty, but, uh, it's a fluted, heavy contour, free floating barrel, uh, which is really cool. Cuts a little bit of weight down. Uh, but these things are dialed in. That's the Franke Momentum Elite Predator. Give them a look at FrankeUSA.com. All right. We're back with Steve Lemonov of ATN. Uh, you guys know them, love them. And if you don't have one, you're going to want one, uh, because especially about what we're talking about right before the break, we kind of jumped into, um, the shot and more importantly, post shot and what happens after the shot and, um, why thermal can, can really save your hunt. Um, and it saved a couple of mine because it allowed me to go, you know, I made a questionable shot on that deer and I see the deer, like you can see it. Um, I backed out, came back, deer still there um, in the same spot, um, dead at that point. But had I gone in after that deer, like I would normally do if you're using just a flashlight, which often that's mostly what guys get. They, they shoot, they get excited, they jump right down, they head out. Oh, I know I hit it. I know I hit it good. Well, sometimes you don't. And that's just the fact of hunting. Like that's just it. Um, but. I was able to go in and I thought it was a questionable shot. Uh, and so I had a monocular. Thank goodness. I had an OTS HD at the time. Um, and I was able to look in there and I saw the deer bedded up and I was like, okay, I know that's the deer. Cause I mean, ran the same path, ran everything. You know, I was able to go back on an X 4k pro and look at, okay, look at the shot. So I can see the shot um, and you go in and all of a sudden you're looking, you're like, that's the deer. 
still up. You know, you can see an alive deer. It's still up. It's posturing up. Um, and so I backed out. I backed out, came back middle of the night. I think it was like six hours or something like that. We went and ate and, you know, watched a little college football probably. Um, but came back and the deer's dead. Had I not had like a thermal unit or something that you could, that extends your vision, uh, beyond what our normal flashlights can offer, that deer would have been gone. Uh, I have no doubt. And so post shot follow-up huge. Right. You know, as, you know, especially during, you know, like archery season, even rifle season, if you don't have the shot placed in the vitals, you know, we all know them when the deer hears that crack, either the rifle or the bow, they, their body kind of, kind of goes toward the bottom, toward the ground. So then they arch their, uh, their, their head up a little, but the body where the vitals go down and you always have that risk of having your shot a little bit too high, a little bit to the side yeah. and missing those, those lungs or the heart and missing those vital organs. And that deer can go into several directions depending on the terrain yeah. and go, you know, 25, 30, 50 yards, you know, until they bleed out and, you know, and kind of collapse. And when it, you know, and that takes time, of course, right. Oh For yeah. Them to, to, to pass. So as twilight becomes nightfall, trekking through a wooded area or, you know, topography that's kind of questionable with the brush a lot of brush it's hard to kind of get your bearings especially you know if you know i'm sure you know i'm sure you hunt typically in a familiar area but at night things go completely off the wagon because your depth perception is all messed up it's hard to basically orient yourself so and using a flashlight is really kind of inefficient. You have to, yeah. you know, it's 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 very difficult unless you really have a great blood trail that you can, you know, follow. You know, thermal was really a great avenue because it'll definitely pick up the smaller particles of the blood because it still retains its heat yeah. from the deer. Well, and, you know, you could definitely shorten your recovery time. I, I've had many customers uh, express how, you know, that has just saved their, uh, the hunt completely, you know, from a recovery standpoint, after the shot, the deer goes 20, 30 yards in complete darkness. And there, you know, you have trouble on, you know, figuring out which direction they ended up going and the thermal saved the day. And they were able to recover that deer, save the meat and, you know, uh, bring it home basically. Yeah. And that's, you know, when I'm, I'm trailing a deer or anything like that, I'm, I'm not the biggest on a lot of guys running flashlights. I'd rather have one guy with a thermal sneaking through the woods, finding a deer. than I would, you know, six guys running through their flashlights, going every which way talking. Um, I, I like, I like better working in completely darkness, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I just think, you know, flashlights, they lend themselves to like identification, uh, stuff like that, you know, I don't, I'd prefer no one around me know that I shot a deer, um, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm just a private person like that. Maybe it makes me a jerk. I don't know. Um, but I, I think it's just the ease of use. Um, just and, and, really and a safety help. perspective, you know, of, with flashlights, uh, some, somebody might be get lost. Maybe they think you're on their property and maybe take a pot shot at you and, you know, looking at the, you know, the light you know, flashing, maybe they think it's a poacher or something, you know, yeah. there's, there's a lot of different elements that play into uh, hunting and safety's yeah. utmost concern. So if you can use technology, not just in the aiding of the recovery of the animal, but keeping yourself safe, I think yeah. it's a win-win. Oh yeah. And, and safety for sure. You know, I'm not saying I don't ever use flashlights. Um, you know, if you're sitting there and worried about getting cliffed out, um, obviously when I'm walking off a mountain, yeah, I'm going to have a headlamp on and just to make sure I don't run into a bear. Yeah. I'm probably going to have a flashlight on. Um, cause I've had that happen and it's not as fun as you think it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> it's just, it's just not, but even, even then, um, man, and that see, that's that goes back. I, man, I someone 
if you're out there and you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, dummy, of course you can use a monocular thermal unit on Kodiak or in Alaska. I would love to know, like, please reach out to me and let me know. Um, KJ at guntalk.com. Just send me a message. Um, because that that's another thing. Like, cause you hear all the time in, in Western States, you know, a guy shoots an elk, um, and he goes to recover and a grizzly has claimed it. Boy, it'd be nice to know that before you walk up on it. That, that or, 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 a, is... or a pack of wolves, you know, in Montana or some other places. Yeah. I mean, that's just another, like, that's another feather in the cap of the thermal, like, or, or a day night vision. Like, it's just nice to know what, if something has claimed it before you have, you know, I just, it's because just some so... animals are opportunistic, you know, some bears, you know, will see an opportunity and, and claim that meat or, or, you know, if there's a pack of uh, wolves in the Northwest um, yeah. and you're, you're hunting elk in that area. Yeah. They're going to be you... opportuni opportunistic and, and, you know, and, now... and claim it. You know how you get away from that, and I, I'll I give everybody a little insider secret right here. This is this is like super squirrel secret stuff right here. Like I heard forever and ever and ever and ever that on Kodiak a gunshot means a dinner bell. That is a complete farce. Like that is that is a hundred percent false. Maybe like within earshot, not the case. But how you get away from an animal identifying where the shot came from? They use a freaking suppressor. Put a silencer on your gun where it's legal and legally, and it just hunt with a suppressor, non-directional sound. It's a beautiful thing. You save your hearing. You save the animal hearing. I mean, you're you're doing a lot of good for the world. Uh, but that, but that is a simple fact that there are opportunistic predators out there, and you know if they get downwind or you shoot one far back, uh, let's say you gut shoot one um, because you thought yourself this great long range hunter um, and you're sitting there and you're going, you know, finding this animal and it's just moving and it's moving and it's moving and a, you know, a grizzly all of a sudden says, Hey, there's something wounded. I better go check this out. Like, and all of a sudden dark falls, well, you better have a way and a means to figure out what's going on ahead of you. And Holy crap. Like an OTS LT would be awesome. No, absolutely. You know, uh, safety is a concern uh, with opportunistic predators. You know, bears are omnivores um, to some degree. You know, if there's an opportunity, you know, they'll take it. And yeah. you know, a free meal is a free meal. Yeah. I mean, we're we're not we're not that far off from each other, like us and, and the grizzly bear. Like if I know there's a free buffet happening at like a First Baptist Church or a Methodist Church, man. I'm going to show up. Like, that's just something you go to. Like, it's, man, a potluck? Sign me up. But, but yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, we kind of talked about pre, we kind of talked about post. But, you know, during the shot, you know, and, and let's just talk about night hunting. Um, especially, I mean, with creatures that just, they just thrive at night. And, and hogs is one of those things you can't ignore when talking to ATN, I'm telling you what, if you want to take out a lot of hogs and you want to get rid of a problem, thermal is the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. They're vicious nocturnal animals. Uh, they're omnivores. They'll eat quail eggs, quails, uh, everything they could, you know, get their uh, snout on. <laughs> they'll, yeah. they'll pretty much yeah, eat. And they'll, they'll destroy farmland and uh, the natural habitats, you know, you know, turkeys, you know, everything is fair game to them. They, yeah. they don't care, especially if it's a big sounder and they, they cause a lot of damage and, yeah. you know, they, they operate at night, they're nocturnal and having night vision or thermal products, it gives you definitely an edge to identify where they are and definitely reduce their numbers significantly. So, so animals kind of adapt and they kind of adapt and overcome and, you know, to preserve the species. And Steve, I don't know if you've had any experience about this, but here's one reason from what I hear, I haven't experienced it, but I've heard and I've, I've seen some rattlesnakes without, without rattles on. And I've seen some rattlesnakes not rattle. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, we're, I'm practically stepping on them and, and they're not rattling and it was normal conditions. 
Um, but I've heard that's due to feral hogs because feral hogs will kill and eat rattlesnakes yep. and snakes. Mm -hmm. So think about this. Think of a safety factor of you not educating a rattlesnake because you're shooting hogs. Because I want that rattlesnake to let me know it's there. But if it feels like it's in danger and doesn't rattle until the last second it decides to bite, that's a problem for me. <laughs> Definitely, especially if you don't have, you know, good uh, snake boots. Hey, yeah. Have you have you heard about that? <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard instances of that. Not not as frequently. Uh, it doesn't happen as frequently from my understanding, but it does happen at times. It's just interesting. And I mean, I would think that hogs are pretty adept to smelling things and stuff like that. I'm sure like their vision you know. isn't as great, but yeah, their snouts, right. their, their, their sense of smell and hearing is very good. And so you know, I would think, I would think like rattlesnakes would kind of be screwed anyway. Like they probably give off an over. I don't get close enough to smell them. So I got that going for me, <laughs> but but no, Steve, thanks for, um, now I did want to say like, so if you're, if you're out there right now and you're listening to this and you're like, okay, you've sold me, KJ, you've sold me. I don't want to get eaten by a grizzly bear and I want to shoot more hogs at night. So right now, ATN is running a hunting season special. So like their Excite 4K Pro, you get a free gift. Um, Thor 4, you get a free gift. Thor LT, you get a free gift. OTS LT, you get a free gift. So actually, money. With, with the thermal scopes right now, where we we reduced for the you know hunting season, we reduced prices significantly on our flagship Thor 4 thermal scopes. You save up to seven hundred dollars right now on Jeez. you know on on select models. So now is the time if you are thinking about getting into thermal night vision. Definitely now is the time to jump in and see the selection. Check out atncorp.com and uh, see what we have to offer. And that's, I mean, they've got binos. They've got monocular scopes. Um, they've got hearing protection. So if you want to protect those, that hearing, if you decided you don't want to shoot a suppressor uh, on the end of your gun, they've got the uh, X sound, uh, which is great. They've got ballistic range finders that you can put on the end of your uh, ATN scopes, optics. Yeah. So they've got, I mean, they've got everything to make your hunt more enjoyable. Um, definitely give them a look. Absolutely. All right. All you gun talk hunters, whatever platform you listen to, make sure you like, comment, share, um, and leave us a review. Um, and I know there's a lot of guys out there, and I know it takes a little bit of time, but it sure does help the channel out, and it helps us provide you the very best content. So as always, gun talk hunters, keep those muzzles pointing in a safe direction, and always be on the hunt.